What's up, TDF fans? I am Jawan M. Jackson. I am Taylor Simone Jackson. <laughs> uh, we're part of the Broadway show Ain't Too Proud of Life and Times of the Temptations, where I play Melvin Franklin, the founding member of the Temptations. Yes, and I play Mary Wilson and jo uh, <laughs> <laughs> he already. Yes, it's going to be a fun interview, guys. <laughs> I play Mary Wilson and also Johnny Mae Matthews. And now we're here to chat about just care our characters and our love, loved, beloved show and anything questions that you guys have. So let's just get into it. You know, let's get into it. We're open books. Oh, we got our first question, Tay. First of all, before we begin, how you been? I know. <laughs> I've been good. I wanted to see you last week. Listen, I, I had Corona. <laughs> oh. I'm fine now. I'm fine I'm so now. Sorry. Listen, I mean, I'm down the street, so if you need some orange juice, let me know. Listen, I did, but I'm fine now. You see, I'm, I'm back to my normal self. I was going to say, you don't even look sick at all. Yeah, I only lost my sense of smell, so like... Um, and honestly, I don't even know where I got it from. I, you know, I don't go nowhere, but in my little bubble, like you're you stay inside, yeah. So, you know, that's I mean, that's important, you guys who are who are out there listening. Yeah. This thing is serious. Wear your mask, wear your mask. Wear your so, mask. <laughs> I went to go get checked out, not even looking to go get tested for corona, and then they were like, Hey, you got it. I'm like, How? But are you serious? Yeah, it was crazy. It's crazy. Oh, babe. Okay. Well, I'm so glad that you're feeling better. Uh -huh, I love it. I'm down the street. So if you need my chicken noodle soup or anything like that, let me know. You know I'm going to call on. I might need kimchi. Oh. <laughs> I'll bring her over. I'll bring her over. Oh, dope. Oh, let's get into this first question. I see it. So do you did you grow up listening to The Temptations and The Supremes? I'll let you take that one off. Okay, cool. Um, Actually, I listened more to The Temptations and The Supremes more. Uh, for some reason, I think. They played it more often in the diners and stuff like that. But um, yeah, my parent, my grandparents actually have records of the temps. And um, I think they have maybe like one Supreme record, but yeah, totally, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I feel like also in, in the South, I feel like they always play it, you know, wherever we go. So yeah. it's kind of like a common thing to hear. I absolutely agree. I feel like the Temptations and the Supreme, just the Motown sign in general, like, if you didn't know what it was, you heard it. You know what I'm saying? So at, at some point in your life, you heard a reincarnation of it. But Absolutely. specifically for the Temptations and the Supremes, I heard that all my life, you know, growing up in the city of Detroit. So I say, hometown. So yeah, that was all that played. My cousin in particular, she was in love with like Motown. She was like Motown. Anything, anytime you went to her house, she always had somebody from Motown. And there's always uh, a collaboration album or a, a tape <laughs> put in her cassette and then I have to flip it over once it stopped to flip yeah. it on the other side. She was a legit Temptation Supreme Motown fan. So like, even when I like got booked and I booked the show for the first time, she right. came out there. She was one of the first re uh, relatives to come out and support because she loved the Temptations and the Supreme so much. So I um, definitely grew up with it. <laughs> like, I think, like you said, it's so common. So, uh, well, and especially in a black household, I feel yeah. like it's just the staple. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Absolutely. You have the uh, collaborative albums with the Supremes and Temps? I do. I have that. Well, I don't have it. My grandmother has it. Okay, okay. Um, but, you know, I just, and they, she, they will not let me, they have it guard. Because, you know, now that I'm a part of... Of you course. Know, I always go home and be like, can I get? They're like, don't you touch it. And they better not leave this house. So I know, exactly. I've been trying to get it, but I can't. <laughs> I got to go to Brooklyn and find, you know, do a little hunting around. So yeah. I got to do some, at least a collab together. Yeah, yeah. What's the next question? Let's go to the next one. Yeah. Oh, take that one. Okay. You both portray icons in the show. Mary Wilson just passed away in Juwan. You also played Mary... Uh, Melvin Franklin in Motown. Do you feel a special responsibility playing real life people? Thank you. Also, TDF, thank you so much for having us here. Yeah, thank you so much. This is so it's much fun. Like, like converse, so, so it's great. Yeah, and I think, you know, it's so crazy because it's on time because you played Mary Wilson and we just lost her. Man, when I tell yeah. you, that was probably the biggest surprise of last week ever because did you see the video uh, of her? 
It was like two days. Oh prior. yeah, two days prior. Yeah. It's up and running and ready to go. Great. <laughs> I, I think I, I it, it it actually took a took me aback. I, I was very shocked. Yeah. And she was so excited about her um Universal album and also the interview about the 60th anniversary. I didn't realize it was 60th anniversary anniversary for Supremes and Tim's. I had no idea. You know, Uncle O was like, I've been doing it so long. And I'm like, well, you gonna retire this year? He was like, no, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, last time I saw him, he was like, I'm ready to get back on stage and tour. I was like, you're crazy. Yes, I'm like, you, Uncle, you so old. He was like, as long as I got breath in my body, <laughs> I'm gonna perform. He doesn't, he, doesn't know what, he doesn't know what else to do. That's This is his life. He's like, he's like, he's 17, 18, you know, even probably even younger than that. So like, uh, oh, right. you know, just the, the not even the pressure. I I think for me, the pressure of playing a real life person has been taken off only because I've been kind of living and breathing, you know, and, and learning and talking yeah. to people that love them and knew them best. And, yeah. the, and, you know, specifically Mary Wilson, like she was when I, I, I met her first in the Motown days. And I, I think I remember like I had a, a different vantage point because like I feel like if I'm being honest, a lot of the artists um, in the Motown era, when Motown actually came out, they were happy about it, but yeah. they were kind of like, well, why ain't my story in here? Why haven't I been highlighted? And because it's so, it was so many artists that, that was in the show, some people felt a type of way about it. But, you know, Mary Wilson, I feel like, you know, when this show came around, and she saw her being highlighted in a way that she didn't really get highlighted because Motown, yes, it was about Barry Gordy, but mostly about Diana Ross. And exactly. then, you, saw, you know, you saw that, but now that she got a highlight, I felt like she was like, oh, I'm finally getting, I'm finally getting mine. Absolutely. And I remember the opening night, she was just like, so, so, so in love and so happy and excited. And I remember her saying, you know, just saying like, you know, how she loved you. She thought you were so pretty. And uh, her telling me, she was like, <laughs> you know, Roman and I weren't, we never dated. We were best friends. And we were like, <laughs> she was like, you know, and you know how the light base has been going. And so, you know, Mary Wilson, was, she was uh -huh. feeling the juice. And she was like, but you can be my boyfriend, you know, in real life. And I'm like, well, Mary. <laughs> yeah, you know you get it all the time anyway. Yeah, so, so like, like these people became like our friends and their mentors and they there were such a wealth of knowledge and you know it's just so unfortunate that you know we lost her and so but our legacy lives on through the stories that we tell that we know of her through her music and through who she was and through you you know in the show who originated the role of mary wilson of the legendary supreme so it's know. it's beyond me to be honest and i think i'm so grateful to even have met her before she passed yeah because I know a lot of you guys have, I mean, majority of the temptation, all of the temptations passed away before, you know, you guys could even meet them. So it was a privilege and an honor to hear what she had to say. Obviously, the interpretation is, you know, a little different because of the writing and the directing and the choreography. But for me to hear their personal experiences, including Shelly Berger's personal experiences with Mary, because they were buddies. Buddies. They was close as thieves. Buddies. <laughs> um, it was like... Um, it was an eye-opening experience. I, I was very honored almost to the point where, you know, I'm able to sit here and say I've had a conversation or two or three or four with the Mary Wilson. And these are always friends, our kids and our friends, you know. Yeah, like, exactly. Like, they're our urban legends that we hear other people talk about. Now we we can share those stories. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's crazy. It's, it's I know, it, it took... It always takes me back um, and just, I have to thank God because like <laughs> these experiences are just, um, they're truly magical to be honest. And not to say, sound like a cliche, but like, when would you have ever thought when you were 16, 15 years old that you were going to meet these legendary icons? That part. Because, you know, growing up, the legends were because we didn't have social media like that growing up. We only had television and we seen it. So for me, celebrities were unattainable to touch. It was like, oh my God, like, and now like to be working with these people to actually know them and not asking for uh, <laughs> an autographed uh, headshot that they used to carry around. <laughs> exactly, exactly. 
but like you said, like that's that's an experience that we'll I think we'll both you know cherish mm-hmm. for the rest of our lives. So it's good. Absolutely, and you know what? The pressure is already off. We've done the work. You know what I mean? Yeah. And um, I got her blessing. And obviously, you know, Mary, she has an opinion. She had like, you know, the little yeah. thing it, but yeah. we expected it in such a way because I would feel the same way. If I were, if I had gone through those things and as an individual, I saw myself on stage and it wasn't being, uh, you know, represented in the same way, I would totally put my voice in to, you know, alter the character a little bit or, you know, just give some type of light on it because no one really knows your life except for you. Except for you. So all we have to do is just try our best to interpret what we knew about the person or whatever the writing has, you know? So. And so I think with that, uh, we have given her flowers and we continue to give her flowers and all of those legends and Melvin Franklin's and the Dennis Edwards and everyone we lost so far um, just yeah. to continue that, continue to tell their story. And that's the most important truthfully and honest is what, um, we are aiming to do so. No. That's that. What's the next question? Well, let's see. Ooh, ain't too proud covers a lot of ground very quickly. Have there been any amusing on stage mishaps? Oh, <laughs> I'm hiding too. I'm hiding too because yes, there has been so many. We're taking specifically with the two of us <laughs> on stage together. Oh, as as we, we said, you know, Mary Wilson, Melvin Franklin on stage are in the story. We play girlfriend and boyfriend and we dated for a brief moment. So we have a scene together that we share, which is, you know, me trying to get on Mary Wilson. And, and so just I think the evolution of trying to figure out what that actually that scene actually was has been interesting. But I used to, <laughs> I, I, <laughs> it was one show in particular where all my words were leaving me, I remember. <laughs> I went to say my lines to to Taylor and I don't know what was coming out. Nothing. <laughs> I was like, Miss Mary Wilson, uh you you don't got to do the the the, 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 the <laughs> and Taylor in true Taylor fashion, Mary Wilson Taylor, she cuts me off like ah I ain't trying to hear about it. <laughs> but then, it went along so naturally. That, like I almost wish it were written that way because yeah. it was so funny. I mean, yeah. I have mishaps though. Her Ooh, shoe, remember your shoe fell off your, your your heel coming out, so you had to like tiptoe oh, with your heel off. On the stage, we have a treadmill. And I have several shoes that I'm quick changing in because I go from the su- Supreme dresses that are like sequenced with reds and beautiful textures into this trench coat that I have to walk a- around to go back onto stage. And, you know, as a woman, we have heels and sometimes they're like little kitten heels and they can slide through crevices. Well, during this particular day on this particular scene with Juwan, I am walking away and my heel gets stuck. And like it's live theater. So like you can't just leave it. The shoe. I feel like at oh, from tripped you or something like that. And then you flew out of it too. Or like oh, I didn't. It was oh, yeah, it got stuck. It got stuck. Or maybe you stepped on it. I don't remember. It was panic. Everybody gotta know that you literally just finished performing in the concert section. So your quick change is like 15 seconds before you got to come back out on stage. So I like all of that going. Quick changes like this. Clay and I are the only ones with quick changes. We are like sweating every day. That every is day. crazy. That is crazy. But she had that. But all, just aside from on stage mishaps, we do a lot of off stage mishaps to each other. Yeah. Taylor started the war between us and everybody who knows us and follows us knows that we're good for pranking each other. And she started war when she peed my dressing room. I started war? You did. Oh, you well, did. It, it started on stage and she took it off stage because it was, I used to try, <laughs> I used to try to stu- uh, keep you like mess her up on stage, you know, and make her stutter. So she got tired of me and then she took the war and put it off stage. And so that is the beginning. So actually you did start it. <laughs> oh, okay, I started the off stage, you started the on stage. That's I started cool. on stage, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, we would just you know mess with each other. And to be honest, for some reason, we are still pranking each other during the pandemic. Yeah, during the pandemic. <laughs> it's, 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 it's coming up, don't worry, I haven't forgotten. <laughs> 
That's okay. Because I got I got a good one. I got like at least three lined up for you. So just stay tuned. So I'm ready. I'm always ready. I told you my petty fund is 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 in abundance right now. <laughs> you guys have money set aside for the pettiness. It's just ridiculous. Too much time, too much energy. Too much. Okay. What's your favorite moment to play in the show? I'll let you go first. Um, I would probably say I love Mary Wilson, but I love having the opportunity to play Miss Johnny Mae Matthews. Mm-hmm. She was so sassy. And there's nothing like the scene where I have to take everybody's clothes and I'm getting the money back. And it's just, I don't know, for some reason, it's fun and um, spontaneous too. Even though things are set and choreographed and blocked, the reactions are different every time. Yeah. So, um, and then I'll get looks from Juwan as well while, while he's handing me off the jacket. <laughs> um, speaking of mishaps though, with that particular scene, I'm dealing with money, I'm dealing with gloves, I'm dealing with my coat, I'm also dealing with the car. And that has had many, many, many mishaps mm-hmm. to the point where the door doesn't come op- uh, open. I've had to hop inside the car. The car mm-hmm. has been lifted up, the wheel has come off, my wig has almost come off. It's just been so much. Yeah. But I would say that's probably my favorite. That's your favorite. I feel like that's my favorite moment to watch in this show. My favorite oh. moment, uh, performing wise, I think is. Just that whole cloud nine um, number. But then I think right before that, we do um, Papa was a Roller Stone in the, the recording scene when, when Khalif comes out, I mean, Saint comes out. <laughs> he got so many names. <laughs> and if you the Saint, I'm sorry. But uh, you, he comes out, he goes, man, what the fuck is this? And I'm like, and that, that kicks off everything for me. It's my favorite act two. Actually, all of Act Two is my favorite moment in the show. I love Act Two. Act Two is my favorite act. It rides yeah. very well. It's yeah, really it just sits so good and it flows and it yeah. just goes. And that, that's also, I mean, sometimes I can gauge how the audience is going to react by the time my scene comes. Because mm-hmm. I'm like, they're not, if they're not good up for laughter, it might be a slow show. Yeah. Um, same thing probably with saying, you know, making sure that like, Okay, are they still alive? Like, are they conscious? Are they following the story? And I love that comedic relief. For some reason, it's just really, really good, you know? It it leads to pressure because we're talking about drugs and sex and, 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 uh, you know, abuse, of substance abuse. So, like, to have that comedic, you know, side of the show is absolutely... (laughs) Life-saving. What's our next question? The Temptations fought to be political with their music. Have you had similar experiences as an artist? Mm. Hmm. Um, I don't feel like I've gotten to, to the point of my career where I've had that. Actually, I, I lie. Um, now, because of the whole Black Lives Matter for me, um, I'm using my voice to um, share light on the voiceless. And I feel like, you know, in some parts of you know, our industry just being transparent and being actually having a real moment right now. Like in Broadway, I feel like artists of color aren't treated the way that they should be treated. Um, and that goes across the board from producers, from artists, from entertainers, from the, the performers. I think that, you know, now more than ever, you know, we are starting to have those conversations, those tough conversations, because we are, you know, a contributing factor to people coming, spending their money to the great white way. <laughs> OK. Um, <laughs> and so, you know, I think that, you know, now I'm being more conscious of using my platform to be able to to affect positive change. You know, what I'm saying as loud as I want to bark, I want to make sure that I'm doing something that's aligning with, you know, my message with it when it comes to. Um, just equality and justice for all, but specifically because we we have not had it, black lives. Yeah. Not that other lives don't matter, but right now we're specifically talking about the black lives that do that need to matter um, in, in our industry. But go ahead, Tay, if you have absolutely. Anything. I mean, it, it's so evident that we talked about those issues before. You know, the in, I mean, obviously, Black Lives Matter was a movement before we even started the show, but it was. <clears throat> highlighted particularly during this pandemic and um i know just colorism in general in the black community i have to be responsible there are certain auditions i don't go out after uh, for because i know that i'm too fair i know 
that someone of a darker skin tone can actually um, gain this experience or maybe possibly even get the role. I want to be able to do my part even as a black person or a black artist um, and sacrifice in certain things that I don't think is, you know, necessarily for me. And I want to, you know, do my part and in the equality aspect and, you know, just make sure that other people have other opportunities like how I would. Yeah. Um, but as an artist, I mean, I think we do it day to day. You know, when while we were on Broadway, telling a story is very responsible. Um, and making sure that we are telling it truthfully is very responsible as well, right? And so I think we were starting to, to do that work way before uh, it was highlighted during the pandemic. Yeah. Um, but personally, I went out in the streets, I protested, I signed, um, um, what are they called? Petitions. Petitions. Um, I've even in, talked to some of my white allies about what they could do to help, you know, um, influence people to bring water bottles to certain meetings and, you know, just what I can do personally from, you know, a safe space. Obviously, we're still social distancing, but, you know, doing what I can to spread the awareness of what we are going through and even. I mean, you say as an artist, I think of, of it more personally as like, you know, taking the time to shop in my local small businesses establishments and, you know. Small, there's little stuff like that makes differences. Yeah. I think it does and, and as a whole. So I wouldn't necessarily say as an artist because I feel like I've already been doing that. I've just been maybe trying to implement more of it in a personal sense and what I do on a, on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah, I agree. That's dope. <laughs> Ain't your proud fans are very vocal. Yes, they are, honey. Have you had any memorable audience interactions <laughs> either during the show or at the stage door? I'm gonna let Jawan take this. Oh, <laughs> yes, we have. I agree, you know. The mo per most uh poignant one is uh when we got panties thrown on stage, and I think somebody like the girl, she ran up and she just threw underwear on stage. And so I think between the five of us. We had, I have a, uh, in my dressing room, at least like three or four pairs of underwear hanging up uh, in my room. And then stage door, yes, there, you know, these people, they come with, you know, you see them seeing their childhood crushes. So these old women are coming saying, I'm in love with Melvin. I was there with Melvin played at such and such place and the temptations were here. And they're thinking that you are these artists. And so I've had, oh, the most, <laughs> I remember a lady telling me, I took a picture with her and we were talking and talking and she says, can I have a hug? And so I said, and so I gave her a hug, you know, pre-COVID and right. uh, she's like, okay, now I'm going to go home and I'm going to make love to my husband and I'm going to think about you. And I said, huh? <laughs> What? Your mom will be approached all the time by these women. The aunties, the aunties are, are um, relentless. Are relentless, but I love it. You know what I'm saying? Like I know how to handle it now because I understand that they're not there for me. Like, yeah, Jawan, I know who I am, and I know what I bring to the table. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. as far as anything else, like they are, they are diehard Temptations fans. You know, and they come with them seeing their favorite in mind. So when they see you, they don't think about the actor, they're thinking about the actual person, which I think yeah. I hold as a, a, a honor because, you know, they they don't see the difference. I'm like, I guess I've done my job well. <laughs> excellent job. When that bass comes out, they're like. They're like, wait a minute, my, my body. <laughs> I, <should." laughs> I mean, I haven't personally experienced anything like that. I don't, the w women don't have panties thrown at them all the time. Mm -hmm. And majority of the time, uh, if there are men there, they're with their wives and they don't probably want to overstep or anything like that. Taylor, Taylor, Taylor's being modest right now because Taylor be getting all the love. The, the, the amount of people that have slid in my inbox and they hit me up about Taylor Simone Jackson is ridiculous. Taylor, Taylor is Taylor is fine. First of all, right? <laughs> so they they be on Taylor. So don't let her don't let her sit up here and be like, oh, I don't get that. She gets it. She gets it. <laughs> Moving on. Moving on. Next question. Next question. <laughs> Tell us about the most interesting day jobs, Jawan. You we know you worked for Broadway ticket seller in between Broadway gigs. Mm. Yeah. So. Um, you know, I did a survival job 
because I felt like I needed to. And also because I wasn't doing nothing and it wasn't any work coming in. So I worked for Broadway Across America, which was a subscription service that um, like, for example, if you were uh, for like the 20, 21, 22 season, this is what we would have called that for theater. So out of town tours like our like our show Ain't Too Proud or Hamilton or Wicked, you know what I'm saying? Like I was selling those over the phone so that people would call in, hear my voice mm-hmm. and they were like, hey, I can't make it to tonight's show. Can I exchange it for this day? So I'm like, sure, let me figure this out. I'm like, do you want to renew your package? We got a, a closer seat. Do you want to have that? So I've had, you know, to do those. I was also doing some bartending jobs. I did a lot of things for survival, you know, as an artist. Don't we all you're not working, working like that consistently? Yeah. You know, you got to have these jobs, and I'm not ashamed of it. And I know sometimes people, um, they frown upon it. They're like, "Wait, you was just a principal on Broadway. How are you not working? You know, as a bartender here? But like, you got a job for me? You gonna pay my bill? Okay, <laughs> okay. Until I'm, uh, you know, a uh, Lawrence Fishburne or James Earl Jones, like." <laughs> Give me a job so I won't have to do these things. Exactly. We still have to audition. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. um You're auditioning now. What was your what was your job um as a like your survival job? Same. I was a I was a waitress and slash bartender in Hell's Kitchen, uh Mickey Spillane's, uh Mr. Biggs, any, anywhere you saw that. And then I also used to package little Vogue pack packets. Wow up on 71st in Amsterdam with this lady. I would just be in her penthouse. She would put on Netflix or Hulu. I would watch the show and package about like a thousand a day. Isn't that crazy? Oh. Coat check, also in Health Kitchen. I, I, whatever you, I probably have done it all. Airbnb, all of that. Yeah, I honestly, you know, uh, working at Broadway.com, um, Broadway Across America was my only like survival job like in New York that I had that I was like clocking in nine to five. Everything else was like just me, you know, just trying to be industry adjacent. So yeah. I, I wasn't so far from it because I didn't want to stray too far. Because at first, you know, Tay, I was like, I got to, I did my Broadway debut and then I checked out every wish thing that at list I had, you know what I'm saying? And that's like, not like rare. And so at the time I was like, what do I want to do? I don't get everything I ever wanted to do. I could go and work somewhere else and be fine. And so like, it's just like rediscovering, you know, and making new dreams and making new goals and aspirations for yourself. And that's one thing that I learned that is important. It is to keep pushing the bar for yourself and nothing's too small, nothing's too big and nothing's not unattainable. So now that's been the journey I am. So now I'm like, I ain't never have, want to work a survival job ever again. You know? Listen, I get it. But also, you know, as an artist, for those of you guys that are out there, it's a struggle as well. I mean, sometimes it's not ideal. Sometimes you don't get the gig that you want. And so you have to continue to make ends meet because New York is expensive. Yeah. Um, but you also have to make sure that you have the availability to even audition and get these roles. That part. So make sure you get a job that is flexible. Flexible. You are the artist. Flexibility is imperative when it comes to you know your day-to-day job. Yeah. I want to be able to audition in the morning. I need my 10 to 3 set Ooh. so I can have all this flexibility and then yeah. I can go babysit or do whatever at night. Yeah, then and that's you know, Broadway.com, they were so like so giving to me. They were like, anytime you need to audition, anytime you need to do, any, do anything, go ahead. You know, the owner literally was like, I want to make sure you're back on Broadway. So whatever I have to do to get you back on Broadway, I'm gonna do. And he allowed me. To go audition and do all these things, which is the most the reason I got into proud because I booked that on my lunch break. Woo! Wished it with somebody, my lunch with somebody, and I went and I auditioned for that show. So you know, what I'm saying like these jobs, like having those jobs, make sure they're flexible and they they work and they know what your true goal is because you want to be an artist. Make sure that you're upfront with that. You know, absolutely, yeah, good for them, very good. Yeah. For them. That was John 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 Gore is, is great. Taylor, you attended a performing arts high school, and Jawan, you started a program for high school students interested in performing. Why is theater education important to you? I can totally say the performing arts school, especially the one I went to, created so many different avenues in which I did not know I needed. They, especially for like musicals, I would have to learn how to sing, dance. Then I will also help out with the set with the art in the back, and then also the lines, and also lighting. I mean, obviously, it's a cohesive thing. And it's imperative to know what you're doing and who's doing it. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? I think you become a better performer and artist when you know what's actually happening around you, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. I agree. I had the same experience. Yeah. yeah. And also people skills. I feel like nowadays, especially during the pandemic, we don't really know how to uh, interact with one another. If you are in a performing arts school or any type of program, you're going to have to talk. Regardless. Yeah. You are. Taylor can have a conversation with anybody. I'm not, I don't have that social skill. I'm an introvert, extrovert. Oh, please. So, Taylor will go, and she's like, she'll find the randomest thing. Be like, oh my God, your eyebrows are so nice. How, who do them? Who, how'd you? And then like, I'm like, how'd she find it? And then they'll have a whole conversation and just go home from there. So like for her, that skill is, is golden. Cause I do not have that. I was just sit there like, so how are you? Okay. No, please. No, you can talk about anything. I know you are. Yeah, no. No. I think, like you said, our education is important. For me, that is the, the reason why I kind of helped start the programs because I start, started to see, with, especially in my community, that the first thing to go and to get cut in budget cuts was the arts. And so I, was, I wanted to make sure that, you know, students and people like myself and kids coming up behind me had that experience because I feel like it creates a well-rounded individual. Like if you have some way to express yourself creatively, you don't, you won't go out and, you know, find yourself in, in other things that aren't, that are destructive, you know what I'm saying? And so for me, I think that that was the, my most important goal and my platform of keeping the arts and education. Um, even now I work, work with Rosie's Theater's kids um, as my charity and organization of choice to work with. And I just think that what they're doing is phenomenal because like you said, Tay, they are teaching these kids, you know, uh, lighting, dancing, design, props, stage hands, like everything that you need to learn that you really don't, they don't have anymore because they've been taken out the school system because of the budget cuts <laughs> and you don't have it. So I just think that is an important thing, an important tool that, that shaped me for, to be the man who I am um, today. Even if I didn't do um, artistry, you know, and be a singer and entertainer, like it right. still prepared me for the real world in some capacity because I know how to interact with people on all levels now. Absolutely. I think that's an imperative skill to have just in the society of human nature. <laughs> Nowadays, no one just has a random farm. We have to talk to one another, especially yeah. when we live in a city, you yeah. know? It's, it's crazy. It's crazy. How have you been staying creative during the pandemic? That's a good question. I've been doing everything. I've been doing everything under the sun. Everything I wanted to do, everything. I could not do from uh, because of an eight show week I've been doing. So I've been recording a lot lately. Um, I put out a holiday single this past yes, Christmas. Fun. Um, I'm getting ready to do an EP. Taylor and I became a wiggle. <laughs> 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 Taylor and I was singing yeah. Fruit Salad. <laughs> we'll take it out. It's almost a, a half a million views on YouTube. Yo. Okay. Yeah. I haven't seen it. I played it for LJ's uh, daughter, Temple, and she was like, I, it went around. I love it. Yo, that's, it. It's up there, yo. Like, And so I'm just like crazy. Like, I grew up on the Wiggles. I know Taylor grew up on the Wiggles. And so having yeah. that experience and opportunity to do that with our uh, castmate, James Harkness, was fun. It was an interesting experience. <laughs> screen is hysterical. Also, we're in a we were in a Budweiser commercial. Yeah, we did a Budweiser commercial together because of your best friend. I know. Just really, how, it's crazy how that happened because I was doing something. No, I was filming. Remember, I was I, I'm filming a, the movie that I did. Oh, that's right. She called me just randomly like, "Hey, can you audition for this?" And I'm thinking I'm just coming to help her best friend do this show not knowing like she was actually auditioning auditioning for with all of us crazy right that was fun, that was fun. Was colliding it's crazy yeah um I, personally i've been reading a lot more mm -hmm. um you know when you're constantly working eight times a week you're burned you're burned and so i have had the energy to wake up early and maybe go to sleep a little earlier um, I've also started a YouTube ch channel. I'm going to get back to it. I, I kind of left it alone last year. Get a tagline, get a tagline. <laughs> hey y'all, it's your girl, Tay. <laughs> yeah. I started with Juan. Isn't that crazy? It is. <laughs> we need to be making this money together. You know? I know, I know. 
combined, just that Jackson power, that Jackson connection. I know. And then this past weekend, I did. A, I started a homeless drive called Home. Um, it was combined with my friend uh, Michael Wordley that did hugs for the homeless. We did hugs for the homeless together for Valentine's Day, and we uh, made a hundred bags and passed them out throughout Har Harlem on Sunday, just to spread a little bit more love. And you know, I want to be able to to reach people, but in a safe way. So that was my contribution. Just coming up with different ideas to help the community. Good for you. That's yeah. That's dope. So, like, what did y'all do? Like, how did y'all campaign to, like, get donations and things? So, my little sister made the flyer. But we uh, tried to put a, a GoFundMe together to raise $1,500. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people donated their masks and time. Um, we got T-shirts, water bottles, socks, gloves, uh, feminine hygiene products, everything that you could imagine. Peanut butter, jelly sandwiches, chips, blah, 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 blah. Ooh, and you made 100 peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. You did? I did, yeah. Godly. I would want to see another peanut butter and jelly sandwich after that. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Literally the next day, I was craving a peanut butter and jelly sandwich because yeah. I didn't even have it. I couldn't eat it because I was like, this is too much peanut butter, this is too much jelly. <laughs> the next day, I was like, I'm going to make a peanut butter I want a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. so good. All right. Oh, uh, what's the next question? Do we have any more? Okay, last question. Oh, this was so fun, y'all. This, so yeah, this has been dope. I can't believe it's gone by so fast. Okay. What is lesson do you hope the theater in industry learns from the shutdown? We'll Ooh. go for the ladies first. Okay. So uh, along with Isha Girl Tay, I'm going to start implementing more videos about self-love and self-care um, because I think it's vital for performers, especially those that are doing the shows eight times a week, not even performers, the people on the, in Broadway in general, you know, you have back stage hands, uh, third, uh, uh, stage managers, everybody that's involved with the Broadway process, ushers, everybody, they need to implement a little bit more of a self-care, self-love regimen. And I think during this time, I was able to be like, oh my God. These are my non-negotiables, and then I, this is the way I'm going to live my life. And I'm going, I'm going to continue to live my life this way, regardless if I'm on Broadway or not. Um, a lot of times we forget to really take care of ourselves. I know that we have health and wellness packages to get a massage every now and then, but to really actually understand what we're going through and sit in it, you know what I mean? But see, that's the thing, Tate. Everybody don't have those type of producers that put that in their their, their show. So, like, yeah. that would be nice for these shows to implement it because again i feel like we give and when i say we i mean every performer that is on broadway give so much of ourselves and our 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 life you know because we miss so many life events we missing birthdays we're missing funerals sometimes we're missing anniversaries and weddings and family functions for the love of theater and for the love of what we do and so um i feel like it should be set up in a way where, you know, when we're coming in, and I'm specifically talking for about now, like um, when we, when people are coming in creating shows and originating these shows, that they're getting points, that they're getting their proper like things, because I think that is important. We give creatively to the process, we give creatively to the experience, and we're sometimes, you know, showing you how to make shit, your sh the shit, not smell because sometimes we're giving shit and we having to turn into something that smells good <laughs> and we make it smell good and then you're taking all the credit for it everybody else, and we don't okay. get nothing for it and so i think that we need to start having the the conversations of giving these artists and these originators their their profits because also i've seen people who have been on 15 broadway shows creating originating shows and then they don't have a pot to piss in that they can call their own because they don't own anything they're not getting anything they're on the hustle and bustle and i think that is disrespectful and it's kind of a slap in the face to yeah. the artistry and to like what they have given they've been giving themselves and they literally you can go on tour and see somebody sing the exact same riff that they created that they done wrote in the show <laughs> and i ain't even a dollar for it i would be melting I got a dollar for I got the I got the, the the sitting fee recording session fee, but I'm not getting anything after. And these things are living well past us. You know, these these cast albums and these things are being referenced well past after we're going to be living. And so I just think that we need to have some type of thing set up where 
they're the producers and the people, the powers that be are like actually caring about this thing because everybody cares about money, it's dollar signs. And I get it, but yeah. we need to give these people. So that's what I wish and I hope that mm -hmm. when Broadway comes back, that these conversations are being had and um mm -hmm. It gets better. I just hope it gets better. That's it. I just want. I want. I don't want us to come back the same way we came. I don't want to see that. We cannot, go back. we cannot go back. You know, not at this point. No. Yeah. Now for a year? No, 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 no. And TV film calling me now. Uh, you got to do better. <laughs> Y'all got to do better for me to come back. I'm <laughs> at the door. Okay. Yeah, I just want to give great art, but I also want to be appreciated for the art that I'm giving and for the, the people that are coming in, experiencing everything that we're giving, you know, also and come back safely. Hello. To spread that awareness, too, and pass it along for the new people that are coming in. I'm pretty sure there's a there's going to be such a big wave when the when Broadway comes back from everyone that was in high school and college now coming into the scene. Yeah. And we want to. I want to bring awareness to those people that are also coming in. Like yeah, if you were condition these kids to not accept just mediocre and just be like, oh, I'm on Broadway. Let me take whatever I want. Like, we need to educate. And I've been doing something during the pandemic, being creative, creating um, something that's going to help and give tools to those people who are just starting out, who need to know the information coming in. Because that would be so helpful. Coming in, you know, these kids are coming in not knowing nothing. Absolutely. Hello? I got into Proud without an agent. I just walked in from the ECC and got it. Did not know anything about negotiating. Did not know anything about tour pay or per diem or any of that. I'm learning as I experience it. And even though I did have castmates like Rashidra and E. Clay to, to advise me on financials, I would love to know the specifics and yeah. know what I can actually ask for. Yeah, and then it helps you also not to get your check because you're making a lot of money and then you're blowing it. And then at the end of the year, when you get your tax statement, it'd be like, you've made $120,000. And you're like, my bank account says $3,000, $300. Where is this $100,000 that you said I made? <laughs> yeah, I did. I thank the Lord I have him, not on what Lord. You know, meaning I think I got I think I got it last year, but I like I've always been on top of my stuff. But it's like again, these people don't know that if you're not saving and doing what you're supposed to do with with it. And so I think it's very, very important. And absolutely you're right. Very good for you. Yeah. Well, guys, I thank y'all so much for having us. Hey, thank you. A great conversation. I appreciate this. Yeah. So much. You know, we could talk for days, to be honest. We could talk for days. Taylor and I just that's all we do. Talk and laugh. <laughs>